When I first started selling on eBay two and a half years ago, I was completely clueless to the amount of information that you'd need to learn and the time, the effort, and the energy that you have to put in to build up what today is now a full-time eBay business. And this isn't said to deter you away from starting your own eBay business. In fact, I really think that you should. It's just that I really wish that I knew these 10 things that we're about to talk about in this video back when I first started. So hopefully these 10 tips can give you some awareness before you get underway and uh, stick around for number nine because that's the biggest lesson that I've learned. Now tip number one is to chill out. It takes time to build a business. You're really not gonna see the success and the sales that you're after straight away. It does take a little bit of time to evolve and you really gotta work on your efficiencies. I mean, for me, I worked every single day on my eBay business for the first 18 months and it took 18 months for me to get it to a position where it hit my goal of being a full-time income. It was building up over 18 months to that stage uh, and it was a real patience game for me to get there. But for you, it might just be a side hustle. You might just wanna list a few items up and start to see a few sales come through. But I think the biggest thing that you should be focusing on in the first six months of starting out is to just work on building up your store size. Try to get as many listings into your eBay store as possible and don't focus so much on the sales volume that's coming in. It takes a little while for the algorithm to pick you up as a new seller. And from there, they're gonna see that you're doing the right processes when those sales do come through and then you'll start to get a few more sales as a result. So I'd work on your first 100 listings. Don't worry about anything else. And then work on 200, 300, and 400. By the time you're at 500 listings worth of store size, you're probably gonna to start to see some consistent sales. Look, I'm no accountant and I'm not gonna to try to be, but setting up your business finances before you get underway is a very crucial step. I think the biggest thing that you can focus on is to try and get yourself a business debit card. If you're transacting everything off the one bank account, it's gonna be so much easier come tax time to not have to sift through any of your personal expenses. Um, so doing that straight away is something you can do. It takes two seconds to do it. Any of the major banks uh, in your country and then from there, uh, I'd set up a spreadsheet as well. So basically have all of your income and all of your expenses just registered in a spreadsheet as well. Do it on a monthly basis to save yourself some time and then come the end of the year, you're gonna have it all collated perfectly to be able to hand over to an accountant. That's the third step. It's best to go and speak to an accountant to find out any business related uh, taxation information that you may have not known about, especially if you're working a nine to five job as an employee. Um, moving into business finances, it does become a little bit different. There are a few different things uh, to know before you get started. So go and find an accountant, have a bit of a chat about what you're trying to do. And th uh, fourthly, I think we're up to, uh, make sure you uh, set yourself up with a business registration. So a business number, an ABN for us here in Australia, uh, that took two seconds for me to do back when I first started. I registered as a sole trader and that was the first tick of the pox to, uh, to get me underway. So a uh, really important thing there, uh, make sure you're focusing on your business finances from day one. So this is a huge one for me. I was always a nine to five employee. And then when I stepped into trying to own and operate my own business, I realized that it's the expenses that actually kill you. So trying to lower those costs uh, wherever you possibly can is a really crucial step to running an eBay business. A big area that you can save yourself some significant money is with the Australia Post My Business Plan, your postage. Uh, if you can be saving yourself some money by getting onto that and registering yourself with all the discounts that they give you based on the volume of sales that you're putting in, the, the numbers really do add up. I've been able to save thousands of dollars. Postage is my second biggest expense uh, for this business outside of the cost of goods of buying the products that I'm going on to sell. So uh, that's a great way to save some money. Uh, any subscriptions that you've got out there that you might not necessarily need, um, setting up your equipment, um, trestle table here that I'm, I'm working off for my listings was got for free off Facebook Marketplace. There's so many different ways, but you've just got to have it in the back of your head. How can I lower my expenses? That should be your absolute focus. One of the really interesting aspects of this eBay business for me is that I've actually turned the camera on and I've documented with this YouTube channel every single step along the way. And it's been really cool to look back on, but it's also been really cringeworthy to look back on as well because I made some horrific purchases back when I first started. I guess it's just part and parcel to getting into something you're not aware of. You're going to be doing some things that aren't correct and buying items that were just because they were cheap. That uh, was something that I would regularly do and it was absolutely not the right thing to be doing. Product research, checking for something called sell-through rate and checking to see what an item actually goes on to sell for on the platform that you're trying to sell it are two crucial steps when you're first starting out. It's a really good education process. You get to understand what sells well. Uh, and also too, you're not gonna be committing to the bad buyers and basically just wasting your money. Just because it's $2 in store, doesn't mean that it's actually gonna eventuate with any profit uh, and sell on eBay. And if it does, it might take you a really long time to see that money. So a couple of crucial steps there. Don't focus on just low cost of goods. Try and buy the quality products that have got some good product research behind it. 
Now, if you think this is just going to be a little passive side hustle gig that's just going to sit over in the corner and make you a few extra hundred dollars a week, you're going to be grossly mistaken. This is an everyday game. You're going to want to make sure that you're listing a certain number every day, fulfilling your post every day, sending and accepting best offers. There's so many things that you're going to have to attend to. So I'll keep this one short and sharp, but just know that you're going to be in it for the long haul each and every day. Now, if I'm honest, guys, this is the one thing that scared me the most. I was actually unsure how to do my postage when I first started, so much so that I set myself up on a three-day shipping and handling setup. And basically, I was saying to the buyer that I would take up to three days to send out the order, and that's not the best customer service that you can be giving. The minute that I brought it to two business days, I felt that I was naturally starting to make a few sales. And then one business day made a few more sales come through to the point now where I focus solely on making my shipping the number one priority and I have a same day shipping and handling setup. And that's something that I hope that you guys can get yourself to. If you can educate yourself on how to ship correctly and you can make that your priority number one when you first wake up, maybe before you go and work your nine to five job, you fulfill the postage for the orders that have come in the night before. That alone, I can guarantee you, will generate more sales because in the eyes of eBay, that is fantastic customer service. It's pretty funny looking back at my mindset when it comes to eBay and the fees, the 12 to 13% that you pay. I used to not think that I could justify that expense and I actually try to sell a lot of my stuff on Facebook Marketplace. But over time, I quickly realized that the reach and the impressions and the page views, the exposure that you get by listing an item up for sale on eBay was just way too significant and the 12 to 13% just didn't seem too bad. I've gone to the extreme now of using all the tools and features that eBay gives you to help you sell an item, and they've worked for me really well, literally all of them. I send and accept best offers, I promote my listings at 3%, I run promotional sales on discount on my items uh, every so often, and I've always got a coupon for 10% discount at checkout for a buyer to be able to use and activate. All of these tools eBay are giving you, if you're not using any of them, you should be at least using a few. I've personally gone all in on all and I've been able to get a whole lot more sales than I used to. So over the last two and a half years, it's just been me accounting for all the different tasks and responsibilities of building this thing up. That's a lot of work and a lot of added pressure that you've now got upon yourself, but it's also very just isolating. And if you're an extroverted sort of a personality like me, you're gonna need some outlets like creating some content, making YouTube videos to interact and connect with people because otherwise, I feel like I'd just go crazy sitting here in this garage trying to get the work done. So it can be tough in that sense. If you're more of an, uh, an introvert, it's probably the right job for you. Uh, but just be aware of that. If you're an extroverted out there personality and you enjoy the co-workers around you on a nine to five, maybe just keep it as a side hustle to try and make a few extra hundred bucks and don't focus on turning it into a full-time gig. Now, I alluded to this at the start of the video as being the most important thing that I've learned. I can't say though that I've learned it. I kind of went into it hoping that it would turn out to be true and it definitely has. It's, it's building my social media presence while I've been building my eBay business. Don't get me wrong, there's a whole lot more work to it, but it's been able to help me out with this eBay business so much more by being connected with so many of you guys out there. There's a lot of items that have gone on to sell to viewers of the audience. There's been an extra revenue stream uh, from viewers of the channel, which is obviously fantastic, but there's even been a real education and knowledge element. There's a lot of people out there that I've been able to connect with and just simply ask questions on how to do things that have been in the game a whole lot longer than I have and have a whole lot more experience than me. And I've been able to fast track in certain areas just because I've been able to connect with all of you guys and ask those questions. So uh, look, it's come in from a financial front, but it's also come in from a knowledge front as well. And just being out there, sharing your story, I just cannot recommend that more. You guys really should be doing that. And it doesn't need to be with a YouTube video. If you're nervous about talking on camera, like I am here with you guys now, you could just simply make an Instagram account and just start putting up some stories, start putting up some posts and just trying to connect with people and share your story and what you're doing. And you'd be amazed what will come of it. Uh, yes, like I said at the start, there's a lot of extra work to it, but I cannot, I cannot recommend it more. But like anything in life, if you don't love it, you'll quit. It's the, having the self-awareness, I think, that's really important to having success long-term. It's gonna take you a really long time to build things up, and if you don't like the day-to-day, -day, you're gonna give up on it pretty quickly. For me, with my background, I've worked in the AFL sporting industry, and I was working in a really revenue-based, revenue generation-based revenue generation -based role of uh, business development, so sponsorship and business development. I was trying to attack sales figures and sales goals 
every single day and I loved it. I thrived on it. I was relatively good at doing it. So I always wanted to stick with it and that's why I got into this uh, game of uh, selling on eBay and that's why I'm still here two and a half years later. It's just something that I personally enjoy doing and something that I'm pretty good at. So I think you guys need to just at least dip your toes in and give it a go, but don't be afraid to step away from it if it isn't for you. There's plenty of other ways that you can make money and there's plenty of other side hustles out there, but definitely have a crack. Give it a good six months, build that store up to 500 listings as we touched on, and who knows, you might find that you enjoy it and you stick with it, and really the world's your oyster if you keep going. Um, if you're not sure about how to get started though from a logistics front, I'm gonna put a video here for you right now, which is a beginner's guide that will take you through every single step along the process from creating account to shipping off that first listing. So go and check that one out. Appreciate you being here for this one. We'll see you soon.